Hey guys, it's Matt here. Welcome back. And this is my top 10 Android apps of July for 2018. So the first app up is a really good browser I use. It's called Kiwi Browser and it's kind of like Chrome. So basically the way it looks and the way it works is like Chrome. Something really good is it has a more material design than Chrome. So it's more minimal. And you also have a built in ad block, which is really, really handy to have. It'll basically stop all the ads and things from popping up on certain web pages. And if you swipe left and right on the address bar, it'll actually switch between your tabs. But this browser is really, really nice to use. It's really fluid. It's really fast. And overall, I actually really like it. And it's definitely replaced Chrome for me. It's got some little neat features in it. And one of the ones I really like is the night mode. It doesn't just make the browser dark. It actually alters all the web pages in order to make it a dark mode. I really, really like this. I wish more browsers would have this. Uh, but it's actually really, really nice. And alone, that's one of the main reasons I use this browser for the night mode. So the app up next is called Google Lens. This one is built into some devices with Google Assistant, but obviously if you don't have Google Assistant, you're not gonna have Google Lens. Nonetheless, this is a really good app to try out. The interface is super simple. It's basically just like a camera view and you have a search bar at the bottom. So basically all you do is you point your phone at something that you want more information on and then click it on the screen. It will pop up with either more images about it. It will tell you what it is, descriptions, a dictionary definition, or it will tell you similar things to that product or where you can go and buy them. So it's actually pretty interesting. Google is really good at these things. So it works most of the time and it's definitely really, really nice to have. Up next is Google Measure. Now I know we have a few Google apps in this video, but Google's come out with some pretty neat apps recently. And this one is one of the ultimate ones that I would recommend. This one actually allows you to measure things in the real world using the new augmented reality package that Google has brought out. But this is really, really sweet. You can actually go ahead and measure like a chair and you can move your phone closer, further away. You can move around that object and it will actually track it and tell you the exact measurement. Obviously it's not too precise, but it's pretty good nonetheless. Up next is Minimal O. This is an icon pack that I recently applied. I've moved away from the pixel icons for a little bit just because they're a little bit boring, uh, but this is a really sweet icon pack. If you want something a little bit different, but at the same time with a similar kind of theme. There's loads of different icons to choose from. There's a huge range, so don't worry about that. They pretty much have icons for every app. And there is some really nice wallpapers as well in case you want to check this out, but it's really, really nice. This is how it looks on my home screen. Obviously, if you get a vintage wallpaper, it will kind of match the icon a little bit better and it will make your whole setup look a lot more dope. Now, the next step up is My BP Lab, and this is one that I wish more smartphones would have. Uh, this is an APK you can download, so it's not in the Play Store. But if you have a heart rate monitor on your phone, you can actually use that as a blood pressure monitor as well. And it will actually tell you whether your blood pressure is too high, too low. Uh, it will give you tips on how to like change your blood pressure. And it will also give you a little diagram showing you the history of your blood pressure and how it's changing over time. It's pretty cool. There's not much else to it apart from that. It's really minimalistic and simple to use. And it's actually really, really good. So if you have something like a S9 with a heart rate monitor, then I would definitely recommend downloading this app. It's pretty handy, especially if you have like medical conditions which rely on your blood pressure staying consistent or not going above a certain range, uh, then this is definitely really, really important for you to have. Uh, if not, it's fun to just play around with. After you do your reading, it will ask you for a bunch of questions about how you're feeling and things like that. And it will add that to the overall history of your blood pressure. So go ahead and check it out. Up next is an app called NeverThink. This one's really, really smart. It's a really simple interface. There's not much to it, but it lists a bunch of different categories. So learn something, memes, lol. It's got comedy, food, YOLO, ah. So there's a bunch of different categories. So if you click on learn something, it will show you educational things. Food will show you how to cook things like certain recipes. You also have memes. So there's just a bunch of funny videos and it's quite good. It's like a TV channel uh, where it just plays different things and you won't see any repetition of videos. It will actually play a different video each time. You can actually save the videos if you like them as well. They will go into your favorite section. And overall, it's actually pretty neat to have. You can open the videos in YouTube if you want, uh, but it's a really good app. It's really nice and I would highly recommend it. I think you'll like it. Up next is an app called OnePlus Gestures. This app is a paid app and it's based off of the new OnePlus Gestures they're implementing, kind of similar to the iPhone 10s, but it gives you a lot of customization on what you want various gestures to do. So you can change what a swipe up does from the left or the right or the middle. And if you swipe up and hold, you can make it open your recent apps, similar to on the iPhone 10. 
Overall, it's really, really nice. The only thing is that it pulls up your nav bar on the S9 if you've got it hidden. And that is so annoying every time I'm trying to swipe up. Kind of ruins the immersive mode uh, that it's meant to give you this app. But it's really, really handy if you want to switch back and forwards as I've got the left swipe up to switch to your previous app. There's a bunch of customization options and sensitivity options and placement options. Go check it out. It's a really neat app you want to get. Up next is another Google app, it's Google Podcast. So sorry for including another Google app, but I could not resist. This is great. This is kind of similar to the new Google News app interface, but it's got all your really good podcasts. It shows the people that you're more interested in, and you can follow certain people, for example, Joe Rogan, and it has all the episodes. You can download them, you can listen to them in the background, and overall, the interface is really simple, nice to use. You have your usual options to skip to the last podcast. You can scrub through it, pause, play. It gives you a little bit of information about what is talked in the podcast, and obviously, like I said, before you can save it offline and also listen to it and you get this notification here where you can actually control the play and pause. Up next is reverse image search. This one is actually really handy. If you've ever been on a desktop on Google, you can search via the images on your desktop and that will actually go ahead and search Google for more images similar to that. This does it the same, but it's an app on your phone. So you simply select a photo from your gallery, it will search Google and you can go find a high resolution photo of what you have or you can go see where the photo is used online, so which websites it's used on, and get more information about the photo. You can also take photos in the app as well, and then do a web search, and it will show you relevant pictures, kind of similar to the one you've taken if it can't find an exact photo. Now the last one up is Volume P. All it does is it replaces the standard volume bar at the top of your phone, and it puts it on either the left lower side or the right lower side of your smartphone. And it has the same design as the new Android P version. If you click on the settings icon, it gives you some more volume controls. So your ringtone, your media alarms. You also have a notification volume, and there's a quick button which actually turns on do not disturb, which is also really nice to have. You'll need some permissions in order to make it overlay on top of your home screen, and you can change which side it's on, so left or right, but really, you can't change much else. So I really hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching, guys. Peace out.